Hi there, welcome and thanks for joining us on this video today. My name is Raul and I'm here today to talk to you about this cool feature called indicators. And I'm going to show you how you can use an indicator in your clips to give you a better idea of how you are doing. Uh, and on the screen right now, you can see that I have an example that I set up. And this is an example that is looking at new users on my website. So you can see immediately that we are trending down and we have 45 users this week compared to 178 users last week. So this indicator tells me immediately that we're not doing um, as well this week, which is very useful. And that's the indicator feature that I would like to present today. And I will also show you how you can further use indicators in other uh, metrics. So here we are looking at a 75% decrease from last week. So let's take a look at how I built this clip here. So on the back end, I do have a data source that I already created. And this data source is coming in from Google Analytics. And it has all the information that I need. Specifically, I'm only interested in the new users column as well as the date column. So I have the new users broken down by date. Um, and I do have other um, columns in there as well, but for this example, we won't really be looking at those. So I have this data source and I'm going to create a clip. So we will start by adding in our value pair component. Now the value pair component uh, has got a primary value and a secondary value. And what we can do is we can use the primary value to have our current week's data. And then the previous week's data can go into the secondary value. So in the primary, primary value, what we will do is we will select the column that we are interested in. And in this case, as we mentioned before, we are interested in the new users. So we will just select new users and we will aggregate that um, so that you can get a aggregated value there. And once you click on the aggregate value, you can see the data there that has been aggregated and you can verify what kind of aggregation was done on it. Again, you can click on the three dot menu and click on aggregation and that will show you that it was a sum, which is what we want. So that's great. However, this is summing across our entire data, data source. And so it's looking at all the dates, how we are only interested in the current week in the primary value. So to do that, what we would need to do is add a hidden data where we can store our dates and then filter on top of that. So we can click on the three dot menu and click on add a hidden data, which will add this hidden data component. And here is where we will select the date column. And just to make it a little bit clearer, we can rename this to say that this is only looking at this week. And now we can filter on this. So we will just click on the three dot menu once again, and then click on filter. And then here you can select to have that only filter this week. So unit to date is the option that we want and it will allow us to select the week option. So this is looking at this week so far. So we'll click on filter and that's what we have. We have 45 new users so far this week. Now we need to do something similar in the secondary value. The only difference is we will now be looking at the previous week's uh, new users. So same idea, we will be clicking on column C because that has our new users. And then we are going to aggregate that. And then we're going to filter on it. So again, we're going to add a hidden data and reference column A because that has our dates. And we're going to rename it so it will show you last week's data. And in this case, instead of using unit to date, we will be looking at the last full option. And again, 
you will be able to specify how many weeks you want to go back. Now, in this case, we want to go back one week. So that's why we have one there. And we're going to select the weeks option. And there you have it. So up top, we have this week. And I can just rename that. And then down below, we have last week's value. So that's something that you've already seen before with value pairs. Now we want an additional layer of information here, in which case we want to add an indicator. And this indicator is going to tell us immediately how we are doing um, this period compared to last period. So how we're doing in this case, uh, this week compared to last week. So to do that, you will just click on the component that you're interested in having an indicator for and then click on the indicators tab. And then what you can do is just click on the add one. And here is where you will specify the conditions for this indicator. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we want to check whether this week is greater or less than last week. Um, and then correspondingly show an indicator to indicate that. So the first one we can take a look at is whether this week was greater than last week. So here you can specify a numerical value, but you can also reference a existing component. So you want to click this option here to do that. And when you do that, you will have access to all these components. So let's click on last week. And so this is what it will look like. If this week's value is greater than last week, then this week will have an indicator and you have a few indicator options available for you. You can have it change a, to a certain color. You can have it display an icon. You can change the style or you can replace it with a text. So in this example, I will take a look at the display icon option and this is what it will look like here. And you can select the icon that you want appearing as well as the placement of it. So if this week is greater than last week, it's a good thing. That means that we did better than last week, in which case we want something green to indicate that. Um, and an arrow is kind of handy as well. So let's choose a green arrow um, and we will just place it to the left. Okay. And then similarly, we want the other scenario where this week is actually less than last week. And in that case, we want it to display an icon again, but maybe we want to display a red icon because it's negative um, and we want it to show that it is a downward trend. So maybe a downward red arrow is what we want instead. So that's going to be uh, what we will see if this week we're not doing as well uh, as last week. Okay. And so now, because the values uh, for this week is lower than last week, you actually see the downward indicator, and that is correct. All right. Now, you can also add an optional third um, indicator, and that might change for, uh, check for whether it is the same. And if it is the same as last week, maybe it's not that bad, but it's also not great because there was no growth. So you can change um, the display icon to show something like a red dash perhaps. So there you go. This is how we would create an indicator. And this is how you can specify the conditions for that indicator to say that, okay, well, if I take an immediate look at it, um, I'll be able to see whether I'm doing better or worse than last week or whatever period comparison you are doing. All right, so that's basically it. Um, and we can name it to become a little bit clearer. And then you can also use our handy prefixes and suffixes here as well. So for this week, we can say this week 
and then for last week we can also add a suffix there so you can do that um, the other option that you can also do is of course uh, put a prefix there and you can do a versus and you can keep the last week there if you want so that's what your clip could look like. Now, if you want that additional data point as to what the percentage difference was, you can do that as well. And again, you can use an indicator to see uh, whether that's a good percentage or a bad percentage change. So to do that, it's very simple. We can add a additional label here. And in the label, we can reference our values from before. So if we take a look at our values for this week and we minus off whatever the value was for last week and we divide that by the values for last week. That should give you a indicator as to whether this has gone down or up. So we can make that into a percentage. And we can have that rounded up. And that would be the percentage difference. Again, you can have the same indicators applied um, as before. So if this week is less than last week, um, you can have it change color. And this is a different indicator type. So let's take a look at change color instead and you'll see what that looks like. So if this week is less than last week, that's a bad thing. So instead of turning green, let's make it turn red. And then similarly, or conversely, if this week is greater than last week, then we want it to be green because that's a positive thing. And so that pretty much is a different way to take a look at an indicator um, and a uh, different option, um, the change color option as opposed to the display icon. And that's pretty much it. And additionally, if you want to just format it a little bit more, you can always do that. And you can also put this in a layout grid. And that would basically give us our clip. And let's see what that looks like on our dashboard. And there you go. So that basically shows you how we can use an indicator to let us know immediately how we're doing um, this period compared to last period. And additionally, you can do some math and apply more indicators to that as well to give you a better idea of um, how well or how worse we're doing compared to a previous period comparison. Thank you for joining us once again. Happy dashboarding.